Okay, so now let's look at a second example. In plane 1, the equation is 2x minus y plus 3z minus 5 equals 0. And plane 2 is 4x minus 2y plus 6z plus 1 equals 0. Again, don't forget our first step. We're going to check to see if they're parallel. If they're parallel, it's going to save us a lot of time. So we do that by checking their normals. So normal 1 is 2, negative 1, 3. And normal 2, anyone? Matt? Oh, I'm sorry. Again, again, getting this wrong. That's too bad. Uh, let's check with Miss Northy. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Northy. That would be wrong. I know who always knows all the answers. Sheldon. Sheldon, what's the normal for this one? Four negative two six. That's good. Well done. Okay. So uh, we've got our normals. Looking at the normals, are they scalar multiples of each other? And of course, you're all yelling at the screen. Yes, they are. So because they're scalar multiples, you'll notice that if you took number one and multiplied it by two, you would get number two. And so since they're scalar multiples, we know that plane one is parallel to plane two. Okay. So now all we have to do is figure out if these, we know they're parallel, so they're either never going to touch or they're always going to touch the same line. So the question is, are these distinct? Well, to determine if two lines were distinct, we put one point from the first line and subbed it into the second line. We could do that here, but there's actually a really, really quick way to see if two planes are distinct. If they are not distinct and they're the same line, if I put in a value for x and y, I should get the exact same value for z. So it's a cool little way to see if these are the same thing, I should put in a value, any value for x, any value for y, and I should get the same value for z. Now I could do it for y and z and check for x. But the most common thing we can do is let's make our life really easy and we're going to test x equals 0, y equals 0, then solve for z. Since we can plug in any value for x and y, we can very, very quickly test the value for z. If they end up being the same answer for z, then these must be the same plane. So we could actually do out the math and say 2 times 0 minus 0 plus 3z minus 5 equals 0. But of course, all those zeros are going to make this really just 3z minus 5. And you might even be able to look at that and solve in your head z equals 5 thirds. Now since I don't really need to use this number, I don't care if it's a fraction. All I care is about if I get the same fraction in the other one. So that's why this is a nice quick little way. So I'm going to ch check plane 2. I'm going to do it a lot quicker. I don't need to put in 4 times 0 and 2 times 0. I'm just going to go, okay, so that'd be 6z plus 1 equals 0. So z equals negative 1 over 6. Very quickly I can solve for that. So it turns out that when I put in x equals 0 and y equals 0, I get two different values for z. That means that this must be two distinct planes. So different z's means different planes. Don't forget to answer the question. D different planes, distinct planes. So, more importantly, no intersection.
Remember, don't do all this math and say, oh, they're distinct, and then just finish there. You were asked to investigate the intersection. You now know since they're distinct, there is no intersection. And you're done. So you can see how important it is to check to see if they're parallel. Because if you can get that right away, then you'll be set. Now, I'm not going to do a third example where they are the same plane. You would do the exact same math. The only difference is if they were the same, your z values here and here would be the same. And it turns out that they are the same plane and therefore infinite intersections. But I don't think it's necessary to do that as its own question.